He had a woman with him, sir. Forget it. His family will. Why don't you? I intend to make it quite clear to the press that you have no support from either his family or his friends. If there was a woman with your father, her life could be in danger. We kill her, we got nothing to worry about. Please, don't move! Same as always. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, he's in Washington. It's just sitting out there waiting for us. The mayor's house. That's perfect. Stop calling the mayor, Joe. He got canned ten years ago. Never worked for a cent. Lousy big shot. I hope we take him good. Joe, I told you, no more guns after the last job. What? Artie, get the board. <laughs> Easy, Artie. We're looking at a two-story trap. It's a waltz. Across the roof, we drop right into Grover's backyard and take off a coin collection to worth a fortune. <laughs> Thank you. 
Ted, Chief of Detectives, Earl Eyshide. Yeah. Marsha and Ted founded the Upper West Side Detective Association years ago. Well, we appreciate your contribution. Every man does. Now, if you can only organize the East Side and downtown and the rest of the city, then I'll be able to take a vacation. <laughs> <laughs> I called you and that ambulance from our apartment a couple of blocks away when we couldn't raise him on the phone. Walter Grover uh, used to be mayor, huh? Yes, he's had a heart condition. We're quite worried about him. Would you check in the living room in there? I'll go upstairs to the bedroom. Yes, sir. Oh, my God. He's up here, officer. Hurry! Right here, it must be his heart. He's still breathing. Does he have a history of cardiovascular disease? Yes, he does. Thank God he's alive. Just barely. I don't know. Pupils are beginning to dilate. The heartbeat is irregular and slowing down. Looks pretty bad. How is he? Does he have a chance? We'll have to get him to the hospital fast. Uh, don't look good for him. I'm, I'm sorry. Let's just get him to the hospital. You can go along with him, can't you? Uh, no, sir. I'll call my supervisor, see if he wants a couple of detectives on this. Detectives? On the phone for you. Deputy Commissioner Kimbrough. Would you like me to tell him you've already left? Better not. Take it in the city. Okay. Thank you. Excuse me. Hi. Hi, Chef. Here. Guess who beeps me right in the middle of a concert? Harry Dean from the governor's office here in the city. I don't think I know him. He's got me on one line. On the other line, he's talking to Jerry Lanky. Lanky is ex-mayor Grover's uh, neighbor, law partner, brother-in-law. Yeah, I know who Lanky is. Lanky is talking to Dean from Grover's apartment, uh, 620 East 33rd Street. Grover is dead. Uh, Heart attack. They just heard from the hospital. I'm sorry. Grover was a good man. Yes. Uh, facing Lanky at this moment are two detectives who seem intent on making some kind of full investigation. Uh, Sutton and Green. Do you know them? No, I don't think so, no. Why? Earl, Walter Grover's private life own personal affair. We make some kind of big deal out of his death, and the public will want to know 
every detail of his personal habits. Well, why would we make a big deal out of nothing, Commissioner? Well, that's exactly what I'd like to know. Now, Earl, talk to these detectives. And make sure that they understand the situation. Okay, Jim. Okay. What did Mikey do up here while you were checking the body? Uh, he was in that room through there, you know, making a few calls, straightening things up. Like what? A uh, scream by the window. I thought he moved. I could be wrong. He closed that door pretty quick. Okay, listen, I want it in writing. Minute by minute since he first let you in downstairs. Right. And I want your shield number. I got him. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Something strange about this case. All right, let's get together in our report. Huh? You get the feeling we're making our lives a lot tougher than we need to. Come on, Freddy's lying. I can hear it in people's voices. You're the first one who told me I had that talent. Now, he called City Hall. I know he did. They're trying to cut us off on this. I'm sure it's been confusing for you, Mr. Mikey. Well, I hope you can settle this confusion right here, Chief I said. We'll do the best we can, Mr. Lanky. Now, if you excuse us for a moment. Of course. Thank you. Detective Al Green, Manhattan South. Fred Sutton, sir. Your girl was dead of a heart attack. Yeah, but Sutton and I, we see more to it. Like what? Well, if you check this nightstand over here, Chief, you'll see a few bobby pins on it. Uh-huh. You'll notice inside the dressing room, a lady's hairbrush on the floor. With a few strands of blonde hair. His wife's in Washington, sir, at their house down there. He stayed in town last night unexpectedly, I guess. Who reported the heart attack? Mr. Lanky says he did when he called and there wasn't any answer. You think there was a lady here with Grover, huh? You bet I do. And the last thing Lanky wants is for that to get out. Cause of death look natural? Well, the police officer said he found the body here. But we don't see how he got a cut in his forehead if he just slumped to the ground on this carpet. We got a theory. Detective Green has a theory. Suppose someone was robbing this place. I hear he's got a coin collection worth a fortune. Maybe he tried to stop him. I think Lanky's covering up this break-in because he doesn't want us to investigate any further. Now, can we look around this place as much as we want or not? Sorry, Green, that theory's too thin. If we make a full report, see me in my office tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Yes, sir. On Sutton. Make a note. One candle on the floor. Why is that? I don't know, sir. Let's think about it. How did I miss that? Good morning. Have you seen the morning paper, Earl? Good morning, Jim. Mystery in Grover death. I don't like this story, Earl. I don't like this one either. Detectives question Grover brother-in-law. Or this one. Police refuse comment on Grover case. Is this case closed or what? I'd like to leave it up to the two detectives who are on the scene. Fred Sutton, Al Green, Deputy Commissioner Kimbrough. Sutton? Very nice to meet you, sir. Green? Sir. Well, now, what's the problem, fellas? We think he had a woman with him, sir. Forget it. His family will. Why don't you? What do you want? I just want to retire next year. No special problems. And I want a search warrant to go through that brownstone looking for a possible break-in. You want to prowl through that building with a forensics team? Jim, there's some question whether there was a break-in and whether there's anybody with him. Technically, we could have a murder here as well as a missing witness. Sir, there's a housekeeper. There's neighbors we should speak to. Somebody's got to know who this broad is. Nobody who respected that man is going to hurt his reputation with talk about a broad. No judge is going to sign a search warrant without more than usual cause. You can't go on a fishing expedition with a man of Grover's reputation, Earl. Think it over. I urge you. Gentlemen. Eyeshide. Oh, Chief Eyeshide, this is Mrs. Walter Grover. Oh, Mrs. Grover, how do you do? I'm here with Mr. Lanky and his wife, my late husband's sister. We'd all like you to know, Mr. Eyeshide, that we're personally satisfied that his death was quite accidental. Now, as I'm sure you know, business kept my husband and me apart quite a bit at the time. And while there have been crude rumors of other women, I would like my husband's death to end them, Mr. Eyeshide. Not fuel them. Mrs. Grover, if, and that's only an if, but if there was a woman with him, she could be an important witness as to what actually happened. And the truth is, she might also be in danger herself. You have no proof of any of that, and yet you would still risk our reputation. <sighs> Mr. Grover, there may be several crimes involved here, people who are dangerous. Please leave me in peace. You can bring him back. 
And I intend to make it quite clear to the press that you have no support from either his family or his friends. Sorry, but that's the way we feel about it. He wasn't very smart to do this, was he? What judges have to get your request for a search warrant? Most likely Judge Coburn. Oh, well, that's great. Didn't Grover appoint him when he was mayor? Well, maybe he'll care about a friend who could have been murdered. Maybe he'll care a little about the family, too. Well, doesn't Grover have any relatives that'll back us? Yeah, he has one daughter uh, by a previous marriage. Her mother died 10 years ago. That's right. He had her on the Arts Commission for a while. She's a sculptress, lives on Long Island. Her name's Hannah. Do you keep all this information in your brain, Finnerty? Or what, do you write the details down in your cuffs or something? What? <laughs> no, I read a scandal sheet. She was a big item last year. Had a terrible car accident. Went into seclusion. Nobody's seen her for a year. Except her father. They were very close. Close enough to care about him getting murdered? Well, I'll try to get a little help for us all here. If by any chance we do get our search warrant, we've got to get back in that brownstone without letting the press spot us. Understood? Yes, sir. Thank you, Chief. Fenty? Get Hannah Grover on a phone. All right. Say now. No mention of the girl at all. We're safe. Safe? She looked this way in the eye. I mean, we get ID for this cable. We're going up for murder. Maybe at the funeral home she'll show her face. But Terry the case, she'll never come forward. We can't take that kind of chance. You know I'm right. We kill her, we got nothing to worry about. You're right. Kind of a funny situation, huh, Chief? The father has the brownstone in Manhattan, and the daughter takes the biggest state out on Long Island. Yeah. Well, whatever our personal problems are, I still got to get in and see her. Got to convince her that somebody in that family has to support our investigation of her father's death. Chief Eyeshine? Yes. Hi, I'm Hal Aaron, Save the Oceans League. Uh, Hannah asked me to bring you back to her studio. Save the Oceans League? Yes, you see, uh, she lets us use part of the main house for our offices, and the uh, rest go to the sisters for their day school. Uh, the children here are deaf. You know, uh, first the accident, and then her father dying. She's deserved a better year. Is this one of hers? Yeah. Strange. Well, she likes to think they're uh, spacey. Anna? Uh, it's Hal, uh, with Mr. Eyeshot. Send him in. I'll just be a minute. I like it. It's spicy. Thank you. But it's not finished yet. See, this piece here, this goes right here. Do let me, let me. Oh, it's heavy. It's even better. <laughs> I'm truly grateful to you for taking the time out to see me. And I'm very sorry about your father. Well, you convinced me of that on the phone, Mr. Ashot, or I wouldn't be seeing you. So, what's going on in your world out there? Never-ending conveyor belt of dead bodies and desperate people. Something like that. Something like that. Why do you do it? I want to be a cop. People I deal with, they interest me. Ah, the criminal mind. Hooked on that, are you? No, no, not at all. No, I'm hooked on the honest mind. My own people. Why they do it. How much they put into it. How it can help them. Not the criminal mind. No, not at all. There's a table in the courtyard. Shall we? What do you do with all your sculpture once you get it all put together? Oh, I just shovel it out to my dealer in New York. Really? No, not really. Oh, I have the uh, soda and liquor over there. Metal water's okay.
I really need your help, Miss Grover. You said on the phone that my stepmother doesn't want you to investigate my father's death. Nor does your aunt or her husband, Mr. Lanky. Well, Jerry and my aunt have always protected my stepmother, Mr. Eyeshide. That was always the best way of protecting my father. I don't quite understand. Well, it's not a very successful marriage. Although everyone goes to great lengths to make it look so. So it is possible there was a woman with your father. Look, I don't want to get drawn into that world. Not anymore. Well, I'm afraid that world has reached out and kind of grabbed you by the shoulders here. Now, this is really important to our investigation, or I wouldn't have bothered you. All right. I'm sure it's more than possible my father had a woman with him. He didn't keep this sort of thing from me. We really are very... We're very close. I'll make an announcement backing you this afternoon. Is that what you want? Yes. Thank you, Anna. Thank you very much. Another drink? I don't really have to leave. Thanks again. Earl! Uh, you don't mind if I call you that? No. My father did call me last week. He, he said he was writing me a long letter. He sounded wonderful. And I remember thinking there must be someone new in his life. Did you get this letter? No, it must be in the mail. But maybe if you come by on Monday, it'll be here. Suppose it's sitting on your father's desk, waiting to be mailed. It's possible, I suppose. Any chance you can go to your father's and look at that letter? No, not right now. Please. Hannah, if there was a woman with your father, her life could be in danger. You have to help her, too. I'll think it over. Call me in my office. If there's anything I can do to help, any time. Thank you. Thank you, Edith. Yes? Mr. Lackey, it's Eve Sullivan. Uh, your office wasn't sure where you were. I hope you didn't leave your name. No. I... I want to visit the funeral home, Mr. Lanky. I'll, I'll stay in the background, but I want to be there. If you get picked up, or I have to go back on my position with the authorities. Mr. Lanky, if those men hadn't struck him, he'd probably still be alive. I may still go to the police. Will you at least let me talk with you first? When? I'll come to your apartment after I go to the funeral home. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Miss Grover urged all those who knew her father to aid the police in their investigation. Unlike other members oh, of the family. Uh, yes, Judge Colbert? Yes. Earl Ashai, Chief of Detectives. I have two men, Green and Sutton, requesting a search warrant before you tonight. And I'd like to call your attention to a statement issued on behalf of continuing this investigation. And Chief, this, I what? Don't you find this call just a little unethical, Chief Eyeshine? No, sir, I do not find this call unethical at all. But the calls I've been getting all day to drop this case are without a doubt unethical. And two of them, Your Honor, have been from judges. Sorry to have bothered you. He's right, I guess. What? Detectives Green and Sutton just phoned from his chambers. He already issued the warrant to search Grover's apartment just 15 minutes ago. Sanity wiped the egg off my face. <laughs> I don't believe it. What's that? system. Sometimes it works. Judge Colbert, be sure and make a note of that name. Now just hope for one more thing. What? That Sutton and Green don't come up empty-handed. Always cheerful, huh? I do my best, sir. How are you? Come in. Thank you. This specifically restricts your investigation to the sunroom, the bedroom, the dressing and bathroom off the bedroom. Remember that. Yes, sir. Thank you. Great. Okay. One or more burglars and a woman. Whatever proof we get that they were here. It's got to look as good as if we had witnesses, okay? Okay. Let's go, fellas. Green. Sutton. 
But Captain Maris say when he left your station. He said don't go, but he's under a lot of pressure, sir. I got a call from Chaplain Murphy. He thinks I'm loony for stirring up this kind of trouble for myself. Well, I'll tell you something. I've loved every minute of it. From the second I saw those bobby pins next to the bed. You went stupid and so did I. No hairpins on the table and no brush in the dressing room anywhere. I'm going to put the candle back in this holder, probably wiped it clean. A lot of manicuring going on for a simple heart attack. You see, the chief's with us. Look, I don't want to step on anybody's toes, including yours. But you're just the chief of detectives. You could be gone in a week. The captain, we got to live with for years. Yeah. I guess I better go back to my office, cram in as much work as I can before it's too late. <laughs> Let's go to work. Left run. Kid. There are no detective cars around. I'm telling you, Artie, I've seen a PD forensic van parked in the back street. They slip in the rear like we did. I'm sorry, this investigation ain't closed. We gotta find that girl and make sure no one else ever does. I ain't going up on this already. Not because of some lousy witness. We'll see. Not we'll see. That's settled. Understand? Thank you, Carol. Afraid to ask, Green. How'd it go? You're right, Chief. No prints on the candlesticks. But we got fresh putty in one of the windows, but Lanky says he doesn't know who fixed it, when they fixed it, or why. We should contact all the glass companies, the burglar alarm people. We're not getting too much support from our captain, sir. Yes, sir. Did he close the case? He said we should go talk it over with the captain. He'll take care of the rest. That's great. He pressures the captain, we get the blame. No way we get out of this without getting hurt. I side. Chief, I side. Lieutenant Roberts, safe and locked. Returning your call. Oh, yes, Roberts. Tell me something. Have you got some sort of a pattern on high class brownstone robberies? Uh, probably in Manhattan. As a matter of fact, we do. You do? Like what? In about a year now, we've had five burglaries, all very slick, very knowledgeable of the victims. We think it's two men. We've got about 20 suspects. Would they go after something as easy to trace as, say, a um, coin collection? Yes, sir. They specialize in fine paintings, china, anything they can sell back to the insurance companies. Roberts, I want you to call this to Captain Mara's attention in Manhattan South immediately. I don't use my name. I want him to think he came up with this himself. Now, maybe if you put it to him this way. Captain, you know if this were just an ordinary case and Mr. Grover didn't have all his connections, Nobody would be trying to drag us off of it. If he wasn't who he was, you wouldn't give a rat's toenail about pursuing it, and you know it. Excuse me, sir, but that's not true. Sooner or later, I'd have to draw the line about being pushed around, whether it was this case or any other case. Captain Murr. Captain Murr, Lieutenant Roberts, safe and locked. I think we have something here for you, What Captain. would that be, Lieutenant? Well, I figured you'd be calling any minute to see who might have tried breaking into Walter Grover's brownstone. What break-in? That's the rumor we heard. We're looking for two men. It was just about the right time for them to make another move, and that coin collection would have been a perfect target. But I guess you got that figured out. Now, if you want to send your men up here, we'll give them all the help we can. Work together to break this case. Well, I'm not sure we got a case, Roberts. Captain, they've killed one victim. Rob Councilman King's apartment. A lot of people would like to see us put them away. What are the detectives' names? We could be ready for them first thing in the morning. Sutton and Green, but Roberts, I haven't made any decision on this. Not yet. It's your case, Captain. Whatever you say. I don't know who's been shooting their big mouth off about a possible break-in at Grover's apartment, but I don't want to hear one more rumor about it. Captain Mara. Captain Mara, I shot you. Oh, yes, Chief. Captain, I was just wondering. Have you suggested that uh, Detectives Green and Sutton speak with Safe and Loft? Safe and Loft, sir? Yes, to see if maybe they've got some suspects in Midtown for break-ins. Well, as a matter of fact, Chief, I I've been in touch myself with Lieutenant Roberts down there. Oh, good, good. Yeah, there's a promising lead, and I was thinking of putting uh, Green and Sutton on it. Oh, good. Those men, they've been under great pressure to drop the case. I'm especially proud of you for coming up with an angle to help them. You've done good. It won't be forgotten. Thanks, Captain. Okay. Thanks again. Get that. Gonna make a hero out of Captain Mara yet. Okay. 
case stays open. But I'm running it. Understood? Yes, sir. Captain. Understood. Thanks, Captain. Well, what did I tell you? What did I tell you? So are you expecting one? Uh, I guess it depends on how much you got her courage together. It's broken. It's broken. I think your father was murdered. Let the lady have to make way for the lady. Please. Hold on. Sir. One question. Hannah, it's with mixed feelings that I make these confessions to you. But thank goodness we can be honest. I have a companion I really adore. A researcher who spent two weeks interviewing me. Her name is Eve Sullivan. Jerry? Oh, Hannah. I'm so glad to see you. After far too long. I've, I've been in hiding, I guess. I've really missed you. How's Aunt June? She's fine. And you? I don't know. I guess it's not really going to hit me for a little while yet. You look well. How's the scar? It adds character. And you look just as beautiful anyway. I just came by to see if Daddy had a letter he hadn't mailed me yet. Well, ask your stepmother. She's the one who's been going through his things. Marion? You're just in time to help me pick out a suit for the funeral. I think this that he wore when he was named ambassador. Something less formal, Marion. I think he preferred that. I disagree. Look, I don't want to argue. I just want to find out if there was a woman here with Daddy. Hannah, there are two foundations, a college and several art collections named after your father. I don't think anything should diminish or scandalize that name. Don't you think that's what's right, Jerry? Somebody ought to protect your father's name, Anna. Look, all I want is a letter he said he was going to mail me. Have you run across it? A letter? No, I haven't seen anything like that, Anna. Thank you, Finity. Hi, Hannah. How are you doing? Well, I don't know whether to thank you or not, but you did get me out of hiding. I met my father's, but I haven't found a letter. Nothing that could identify the woman. Nothing, I'm sorry. I've been thinking, Hannah. Was he working with anybody on a book? You know, an editor, anybody like that? You know, that is a logical way for him to meet a young woman. Well, not that I know of. Of course, he's always being interviewed for some newspaper or a magazine or something. But I don't keep track of all the articles. Listen, I want to go to the funeral home this afternoon. Do you think I could lean on you? You name the time. Two o'clock. Okay, I'll see you there. And Anna, thanks for trying to help. Goodbye. Finity. Yes, sir. I want to see if a magazine article and newspaper feature written about Walter Grover in, say, um, the last six weeks. And I want them here in the next couple of hours. Yes, sir. Fingerprint of the brown stone, right? Bedroom, sunroom, dressing room. But you didn't find any prints. I could have left prints, but I'm sure this guy Lanky wiped them off. They never leave prints. They wear gloves. We got a kind of print off a window, like the palm of the hand, only through a thin pair of gloves. We got three like that at least, but they don't get us anywhere. Sure it gets us somewhere. It proves we're not crazy. They were there. What'd I tell you? Nothing short of a conviction is going to save our butts. OK. Suppose we canvass the area around Grover's brownstone. Do you have any descriptions of suspects who could have been casing the place? A janitor spotted him once. Two men wearing mustaches, which were probably fake, but we made drawings anyway. 
which I still can't ID. Can we keep this? Sure. inside, Mr. Lanky. It sure. I was hoping you'd stay away, Eve, until we could talk. We'll talk later. Right now, I want to pay my respects. Please. It's all right, officer. Miss Sullivan, this family. Thank you. Super? Yes. Police Department, Detective Sutton. We're looking for two gentlemen who might have tried to rent an apartment from you recently. Mm -mm. It's good that you came, Hannah. Your being here made it easier. Thanks. Listen, I did some research after you called this morning. I'd like to talk to you for a while. Do you know the River Cafe? Yes, uh-huh. Can you meet me there? In an hour? I'll see you there. Okay. Taxi? in advance. Cash! I shouldn't even be letting you in. You got a conscience. You're doing the right thing. Hey, Fred, take a look at this. Right across the roof, you're in the back of Grover's apartment. We gotta get this place painted right away. They felt safe here. They could've got careless. And you better give Robbins a call. What about the captain? We give him as little room to take over as possible. This is our case. We finish it. Thank you. You gonna call Roberts? Well, you can drop me off here. Then have at least you pick me up about half an hour. Right, Chief. Dress. I saw it in the window and couldn't resist. No more fluffy hats, no more dark glasses, no more hiding. Good, I'm glad. Thanks so much. I ordered it for you. Oh, that's perfect. You, uh, you said you did some research. Yes. Now, I figured, who gets to spend a lot of time with a famous man? Now, not a reporter. They talk to you once and then they're gone. But a researcher? You know, he was very pleased with last month's article in News Monthly. I remember him telling me that they had a researcher he especially admired. Eve Sullivan. He didn't mention a last name, but Eve. Yes, I think he did say that name. That's good. He's 50th. That's good. Now what? Well, I'll go see if she's home and get her to tell the truth. Earl, maybe next weekend, if you could come out to the island, we could do a little sailing, have a picnic or something. Look, I'm sorry, Hannah. I'd really like to. Just don't seem to have much free time. Well, I'm glad I met you, Earl. You came into my life at the right time. Even if it was because of my father's death. Yeah. I hope we've helped each other. What's the matter, Hannah? Oh, it's nothing. It's just... 
bust an old boyfriend I haven't seen in a long time. Want me to bust him? Oh, no. No, it's just that he's going to want to know everything that's happened to me in this past year. Let's keep him guessing. How? Oh. Somebody changed a light bulb. So we're looking for a right hand thumbprint with this funny loop here. We got him. His name is Joe Kiter. Used to be a machinist, a locksmith. I didn't have him figured too highly. Okay, but you got an address on him? We pick him up. As a matter of fact, we do. 700 West 73rd, apartment 16. I wanted you to take a sabbatical from work. It's $20,000. Cash. Untraceable. Like me, right? Miss Sullivan. Eve. I don't make light of your relationship with Walter. And I don't wish to corrupt you. I simply see no merit in keeping Walter's name before the public in anything but a dignified way. Dignified? He was an extraordinary human being. And if he had been me, would he have taken this money? I want to come forward to the police and identify those burglars. I'll just tell them I panicked and left. You can stay with your story about calling him, getting worried, coming over. But that'll look as if you just turned your back on him. Didn't care what happened, didn't call anybody. I don't want to get you in any more trouble than I have to. Well, I'd better be going. It's obvious why he liked you. We'll speak to the police tomorrow. Tell them the whole truth together. Mr. Lanky. Thank you. I'm sorry. I know. Mr. Lanky. Chief Eyeshide. What are you doing outside Mrs. Sullivan's apartment house? No! Let's go. Police, don't move! Not the gun! Don't shoot! Both Sutton and Green. Terrific. And Captain Myra. 
doctors aren't all sure who to listen to in the future, me or the commissioners. What about Langdon? That is the DA's problem, not ours. Somebody else gets a pressure for a change. Miss Grover insisted we put it in your office. Yeah, I like it, I like it. A few sharp edges there you gotta watch out for. Got myself an original Hannah Grover. Oh, yeah. It's a real work of art, Chief. Must be very valuable. Well, I don't know, Kennedy. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't take a million dollars for it. Not a million. I'm using this other long-distance company.